Okay, welcome back to uh, Gas Laws Part 4. Uh, you'll notice in your notes that we've actually skipped a little bit. We're going to skip ahead to gases in the mole and we're going to begin talking about Avogadro's Law. Uh, those other things, um, we'll see if we can hit those in class. If not, uh, technically they're not part of the curriculum, so we might have to breeze over them this year. We'll take a look and see what our schedule is like. But today, we're going to hit uh, gases in the mole. We're going to talk about Avogadro's law, and we're also going to talk about something called the ideal gas law. Now, Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure will contain the same number of molecules. Now, that's pretty profound. Let's read that again. If you have the same volume of a gas, and it could be any gas, and the temperature and pressure are the same, that container will have the same number of molecules regardless of the gas that's in there. Let me give you an example. We're going to pick on three balloons here. Uh, we have one that's made up uh, that has hydrogen gas in it, the other has oxygen gas in it, and the other has carbon dioxide gas in it. Now, according to Avogadro, if the volume, the size of these three balloons, were identical, the number of molecules in each balloon would be uh, the same. So even though one gas is heavier than another gas, the number of particles inside that balloon, so long as the volume is the same, and their temperature is the same, and the pressure remains constant, the uh, number of molecules will also be the same. So, dumb question time. Which balloon has the greatest number of molecules? The one with hydrogen, oxygen, or carbon dioxide? Well, what do we just say? If they're the same size, they all have the same number of molecules. So they all have the same number. Regardless of the gas that's inside. Now this is different. Which balloon is heaviest? Well, let's see. Um, Hydrogen gas, we know, has a molecular weight of 2.02 grams per mole. Oxygen gas, 32.00 grams per mole. And carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams per mole. So if they have the same number of molecules, and let's just say for the sake of argument, they have one mole of um, each of those gases. Won't the one that contains carbon dioxide be the heaviest? Because its molecules weigh the most. So which balloon is heaviest? That would be the CO2 filled balloon. Once again they're the same size according to Avogadro, <coughs> but the one that's heaviest will have the molecules that weigh the most. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Alright, now it's been found that one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure now remember standard temperature would be 273 Kelvin and standard pressure would be one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury will occupy a volume of 22.4 liters now we can use that as a conversion factor if we have a gas at STP one mole of a gas at STP will have a volume of 22.4 liters. Now this is an important concept and you should learn it forever and ever. Thus, one mole of oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, helium, sulfur hexafluoride, does not make a difference what the gas is. Each of these, if I had one mole of them, would have a volume of 22.4 liters at zero Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury, or one atmosphere. Now, it should make sense that as the number of gas particles increase, so would the volume of my balloon. Or, if my container wasn't flexible like a balloon, if I had a rigid container, as the number of particles increased, um, so would the pressure. So we could state Avogadro's law as follows. The volume is proportional to the number of moles, so long as the temperature and pressure remain constant, or we could say the pressure is proportional to the number of moles so long as the volume and temperature stay constant. So, we now have, I claim, four variables that can describe a gas. 
We talked about Boyle's Law, and Boyle's Law talked about pressure. We then talked about Charles's Law, and his Law talked about temperature. Of course, it was how pressure and temperature related to the volume of a gas. And finally, Avogadro's Law, which is involved in the number of moles, or the number of particles. So, pressure, we can abbreviate with a P. Temperature, we will abbreviate with a T. Volume, with a V. And the number of moles, with an N. Now, with that in mind, we can combine all four of these variables, not into one gas law or two gas laws. We have one big gas law. This big gas law is called the general gas law, or you may have heard of it as the ideal gas law. So, the three um, gas laws relating these variables are volume is proportional to the number of moles. Remember, that's Avogadro's law. We just mentioned that. Volume is proportional to the absolute or Kelvin temperature. That's Charles's law. And volume is inversely proportional to pressure. That's Boyle's law. Let's combine all three of these into one expression. Can't I say that volume is proportional to the number of moles? Avogadro's. It's also proportional to temperature. Charles's law. And it's inversely proportional to pressure. Boyle's law. Now, nobody likes to do math with proportionality signs. So, to turn that into an equal sign, which we'd like to do, we need to add a proportionality constant. So, we often use the symbol K to represent a constant. So, if I want to get rid of this, I can say V equals K and T divided by P. So, I'm just going to write that over here. V equals K, that's my proportionality constant, and the number of moles T, the Kelvin temperature, and P, the pressure. Now, we usually like to put P over on this side of the equation. So if I multiply both sides by P, I get PV equals N. And instead of K, we like to use the letter R. So it's the same thing as my proportionality constant over here, but we change it to the letter R. It's usually written in this order for some reason, probably because it sort of sounds like PIV-NERT. So oftentimes you'll hear people refer to the ideal gas law as PIV-NERT. PV equals NRT. Now, R is a constant. That means it's constant. It doesn't change. So we can calculate the numerical value of R at one set of uh, circumstances. For instance, I can use one mole of gas, and I can use standard temperature, and standard pressure. So, R would be equal to PV over NT. Standard pressure, one atmosphere. The volume of one mole of gas at STP would be 22.4 liters. I have a few extra significant figures here. We said this was for one mole at zero Celsius, or 273 Kelvin. If we do the math, we get 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Now this is our, the numerical value for the ideal gas law constant, R. Now notice the pressure unit that we used for calculating R was the atmosphere, not the millimeter of mercury, not the kilopascal. Now if we end up using another pressure unit, we need to convert it to atmospheres in order to use this constant. So let's try a real quick problem. This should be pretty straightforward. Let's find the volume occupied by 1.65 grams of oxygen at 17 Celsius and a pressure of 662 millimeters of mercury. So we have PV equals NRT. We're going to use our ideal gas law. We're solving that for V, right? Find the volume. So if we want V by itself, don't we have NRT? And we need to bring P over to the other side, so we'll divide by it. Now, if we take N times R times T and divided by P, we will have the volume of that gas in liters. So let's see, how do we find the number of moles? Well, I've given you grams. So, 1.65 grams of oxygen. We have to get that into moles, so we can use this equation. So we're going to go from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. One mole of oxygen has a mass of 32.00 grams times R. 
0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin <coughs> times temperature. And remember that needs to be the absolute temperature or Kelvin temperature, not Celsius. So we'll add 273 to that and we have 290 Kelvin. And then we're going to divide it by the pressure. Now interestingly enough, my pressure is in millimeters of mercury. My ideal gas law constant has the unit atmospheres. So I need to convert out of this. So what I'm going to do in the same expression is I'm going to put millimeters of mercury on top to convert out of it. See how they're opposite each other? And I'm going to put atmospheres on the bottom. That's what I'd like to be in. Remember our conversion factor from earlier in this chapter. One atmosphere is defined as 760 millimeters of mercury. Now let's see if my units work out. If they do, I should have a volume unit. So millimeters of mercury are gone, atmospheres are gone, Kelvin is gone, moles of oxygen are gone, and grams of oxygen are gone. I have liters remaining, and that's exactly what I'd like. So let's multiply this out, and look, I'm going to use a cheap calculator just to show you you don't need to have one of those fancy ones. So, 1.65 divided by 32.00 times 0 0.0821 times 290 Kelvin divided by 662 millimeters of mercury times 760. Enter. I end up with, looks like I have three sig figs here, 1.41 liters of a gas. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now this actually turned out to be a fairly difficult Pivnert problem because I had to convert out of millimeters of mercury and I also had to go from grams to moles. Oftentimes they are much, much easier than this. Let's take a look at another example. For example two, I want to find the temperature that 27 grams of methane would occupy um, at a volume of 13 point liters 13.2 liters if the pressure was 1.26 atmospheres. So we're going to use PivNert again, PV equals NRT, and we are going to solve for temperature, right? At what temperature? So we want temperature by itself, so wouldn't we end up with PV and we want to divide by NR? Now, my pressure is 1.26 atmospheres. Well, that's a relief. We like the unit atmospheres when we use Pivnert because R is oftentimes given in the unit liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Times V, 13.2 liters. We like liters as well because once again R is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. We're going to divide by the number of moles. Well, I have 27 grams of methane. I don't want to divide by grams of methane. I want to get out of grams of methane and into moles of methane. One mole of methane has a mass of, let's see, carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Each hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. So let's see, that would give me 16.0, uh, we'll say 5 grams per mole. So I'll have divided out of grams and now I have moles on the bottom, which is what I'd like. Then we'll divide by R, which is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So I'm dividing by R so the mole Kelvins pop up on top. Now, if I'm done, if I've done it properly, I should have a temperature unit left. So let's check. Atmospheres divide out, liters divide out, moles divide out. I have Kelvin left, which is a temperature unit, isn't it? So we'll pull out our cheap calculator and let's see, 1.26 times 13.2 divided by 27.0 times 16.05 divided by 0 0.0821. Enter. Looks like I end up with uh, 120 Kelvin would be my temperature. Now we could convert that to Celsius if, you, if I asked you to, but we'll leave that in Kelvin. Okay? Now, just one more problem for fun. I don't think I'm going to make you do any of these this year, but for AP, we will be involved in a few more problems that deal with Pivnert. One thing you can do, which I think is kind of cool, is to find the molecular weight of a gas. 
Now to find molecular weight, remember we need to know two things. Grams and moles. Now we can tackle this problem a couple of different ways. Um, when you do this type of problem, grams are always given to you. You see that? 0.382. So really all we need to find out about the gas is the number of moles. And then we can plug that in right there. We'll divide grams by moles and voila, we have our molecular weight. So let's give it a whirl. I could say N equals PV over RT. Let's check that out just to make sure I'm right. I want N by itself. So I have P times V, so I need to divide both sides by R and T. Yeah, I feel good about that. So the pressure is 1.006 ATMs. The volume, now that's 256 cubic centimeters. That's the same as 0.256 liters. Remember, cubic centimeters is the same as a milliliter. So if I have 256 of those, that would be 0.256 liters. Divided by R, that's our ideal gas law constant, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Remember when we divide by R, mole Kelvin pops up on top. And we'll divide that by our Kelvin temperature. Now 28 degrees Celsius plus 273 would be 301 Kelvin. Now if I've done it this properly, I will have the unit mole left over. So Kelvins divide out, atmospheres divide out, liters divide out. Look, I've got moles on top. It's perfect. So we'll pull out our calculators. 1.006 times 0.256 divided by 0.0821 divided by 301. Enter. I end up with 0.0104 moles. And that's what I need to know to find the molecular weight. So my molecular weight would be 0.382 grams. That was given. Divided by 0 0.0104 moles. That was calculated using Pivnert. So let's see what we get. Oops. 0.382 divided by 0 0.0. Oops, let's clear that all. 0.382 divided by 0 0.0104 gives me a molecular weight of 36.7 grams per mole. Okay, now that's one way to do it. There's another way to do that, and I'll show that to you in class. But for right now, let's end it there. So we've done Avogadro's Law, and we've used his law, Boyle's Law, and Charles's Law to end up with the ideal gas law, which comes out to be piv -nert. Okay? All right, thanks for being with me.